evening. This is Newsnight Nevada. Tonight, our subject is American nuclear testing, the past and the present. In our first report, the present. It's a report about a question in the minds of many residents of western states. Has the underground nuclear testing program at the Nevada test site been safe? Recent allegations have surfaced concerning the question. A citizens group in Utah is even circulating a petition calling for the closure of this nation's only active nuclear testing facility. Reporter Steve Herman has been researching these allegations, and here is his report. The allegations concerning the safety of the underground testing program were spotlighted in a syndicated newspaper article that ran in some papers last month from California to Iowa. The article by Norman Solomon of the Pacific News Service received front page play on the Sunday, July 13th edition of the San Francisco Examiner, one of the most read Sunday papers in the country. Solomon, a self-admitted opponent of underground testing, charged that radioactive gases have been seeping from the test site in two cities like Las Vegas. The article also suggested that a 1977 underground nuclear test leaked radiation into Utah, but that test site officials blamed the radiation on an atmospheric Chinese blast that had occurred a week earlier. Another reporter, Joseph Bowman of the Deseret News in Salt Lake City, also researched the allegation concerning the Comie test of September 27, 1977 in Nevada. Uh, the day after the test, suddenly higher than normal radiation readings were recorded in monitoring devices in three towns in Utah. These are Beaver, Moab, and Wendover. They weren't high enough to cause any concern. They weren't dangerous to humans, but they were definitely higher than background radiation. Uh, these readings were uh, 21, 18, and 39 picocuries per cubic meter, apparently quite a small, uh, quite a low level radiation. But officials in this state were at a complete loss at the time to explain these readings. Apparently there was no announcement from the uh, Department of Energy that there had, from order, that there had been any venting during the test the day before. And uh, our people, taking that as some sort of indication that the test had not spewed any radiation, uh, decided somehow it was connected with the Chinese test of September 17th. Right. At the time, they said, though, the relationship is unclear. Energy Department and EPA officials refused our invitation to appear on camera to refute the allegations made in the newspaper story. However, in a letter sent to the San Francisco Examiner and the Cedar Rapids Gazette, the DOE called the radiation detected insignificant. But the letter did not elaborate on whether the readings were caused by the underground tests or the Chinese blasts, as they had initially claimed. The article in the second paragraph says, quote, until recently, these subsurface tests were viewed as safe, but government documents and other sources now indicate that radiation is seeping from underground caverns at the test site, unquote. That implies that the testing program is now unsafe. But Solomon, in his article, does not attempt to explain just how harmful the radiation is that has been seeping. That makes this front page article on the underground testing program journalistically irresponsible and misleading. Other statements in the article, such as a claim that monitoring data is secret, and an allegation that monitors in Utah were not turned on when they were supposed to be, we determined were just not true. It is true, though, that radiation has been seeping from the test site. But before we go into that, a brief look on what radiation is all about. First of all, radiation is everywhere. It's in the soil below our feet, it's in the walls, it's even being emitted from the television site you're watching right now. There are three types of radiation, alpha, beta, and gamma. Alpha particles cannot penetrate unbroken skin. However, taken into the body, it can seriously damage the internal organs. Alpha is emitted in the venting of nuclear tests. Now beta, when left on the skin for long periods of time, can cause serious burns. However, if the particles are brushed off quickly, they won't even cause serious burns. Beta is also found in nuclear explosions. Gamma rays are like X-rays. They penetrate most materials with ease. It is the most dangerous type of radiation, and it is found in nuclear fallout. Just for reference, the unit quantity of radiation is a curie. And a curie is equal to any kind of radioactive atom in which 370 billion radioactive disintegrations 
of irradiated material occur a second. A rad is a measurement of an absorbed dose of radiation. And a rad is equal to the energy of 100 ergs per gram of irradiated material. As you can see, nuclear radiation is a complex science, and despite all the charts and the millions of sentences scientists have written about radiation, even though we've been able to build atomic bombs that can destroy our planet, we don't know that much about radiation. In fact, there is a fierce split in the scientific community today on just how much radiation it takes to harm you. One factor believes there's a threshold point. That is, you must accumulate a certain amount before it's harmful. Others insist that any amount, no matter how minute the dosage or the length of exposure, can be damaging. One individual that adheres to the latter belief is Preston Truman, director of Citizens Call, an anti-nuclear group that wants testing in Nevada stopped. Truman, a southern Utah native, grew up watching the above-ground atom tests contaminate his neighbors. Today, he's concerned about the underground nuclear tests. I think they're quite dangerous myself, and I think that the Department of Energy has been quite hesitant in, in releasing the facts of the dangers in the underground tests. What kind of facts do you think they've withhold, withheld? I think they've withheld some of the monitoring data, and I think they've been very cautious in, what, in their comments they've made, especially about the uh, xenon releases and the back drilling. Now, the xenon releases that we have documented show that uh, levels seem to be in the areas of picocuries, and the government maintains that these releases of xenon from back drilling are of such a small level that they are, there's no way that they're, they're harmful. Do you agree with that? No, I don't. Uh, they're, they're neglecting to mention the fact that exposure to radiation is an accumulative problem. And the population that lives around those so-called insignificant releases of radiation have already accumulated a radiological burden where that exposure would be dangerous. We were able to document that xenon leakages from the test site were detected beyond the boundaries from 1970 through 1978. It was detected regularly in Las Vegas and smaller communities near the test site like Baby, Indian Springs, Death Valley Junction, and Diablo. Probably one of the most respected observers of the underground nuclear testing program is Dr. Robert Pendleton. He was a part of the monitoring program during the 60s, and today he is chairman of the Radiological Health Department here at the University of Utah in Salt Lake City. Dr. Pendleton is convinced that the xenon levels that were measured were not harmful, except during the famous Bainbury venting in 1970. But these levels of the radioactive materials, if these are to be uh, interpreted as the final measurement, I wouldn't be a bit worried about that. In fact, Dr. Pendleton added that he and I had been exposed to more radiation during our half-hour chat than was measured by the xenon monitors around the test site during a typical year. And Dr. Pendleton also does not adhere to the theory, as Preston Truman does, that even a minute increase in the amount of radiation can cause damage to living beings. It does one tiny bit uh, add in immeasurably to the damaging effect? Of course it doesn't. Uh, look at the uh, difference between Salt Lake City and Los Angeles from the standpoint of just natural radioactivity. The radiation's dose at the level of Los Angeles, that is assuming that they're not breathing a lot of coal smoke, which is loaded with natural radioactive materials, but at that altitude would be considerably less than it is here at Salt Lake City. And yet uh, no de demonstration by good uh, uh, studies of uh, human effects have shown any changes. Now the question, what does it mean when they say there's been a venting or a seepage of radiation at the Nevada test site? Well, both are terms identifying radiation leakages from underground nuclear tests. Ventings can be serious accidents, inadvertently sending a large amount of radiation to the surface and into the atmosphere shortly after an underground detonation. Or as scientists phrase it, a rapid release of radioactivity within minutes after the explosion, but which does not continue for hours. It therefore involves the release of short-lived isotopes producing a relatively high specific activity. 
Seepages, as the chart says, is a very slow release of relatively small amounts of radioactivity per unit time, for times extending from hours to perhaps days. Seepages can occur during back drilling. That is when scientists go back into the hole after a test has been completed. Ventings occurred throughout the 1960s. There have been only three known occurrences of it in the 70s. The Snubber Test of April 21, 1970. The well-publicized Bainbury debacle of November 18th of the same year. And one on November 25th, 1971, which received very little publicity at the time. The Diagonal Line Test. A seemingly strange thing happened after that test. Four hours after the detonation at 12.15 p.m., radioactive gases began seeping from the ground and a radiation cloud headed towards California. But by this time, the monitoring network had been shut down for some reason. The monitors were not turned back on for another 11 hours. Thus, it will never be known whether the contamination was serious from that venting. Seepages have continued to occur nearly every year, as we said, and as Dr. Pendleton told us, the radiation from seepages is approximately 10,000 times less severe than the radiation that was detected from ventings. Although Pendleton is not concerned about the seepages of xenon, krypton, and tritium that have occurred, he is alarmed about the monitoring program that the test site runs. I haven't been satisfied with it since uh, the program that I was running had, uh, was terminated. Uh, you must have monitoring by an agency, uh, preferably a university, outside the complete administrative control of the agency performing the tests. Deseret newsman Joseph Bowman, the nuclear specialist, also had some words of advice for the Energy Department concerning their atomic testing program these days. Well, I don't believe you get uh, very much at all from uh, on the nuclear tests. Maybe it's because they're often connected with weapons, um, but uh, almost all we ever see is an announcement that a test would be held and then later some small uh, announcement that there was no danger or no fallout uh, escaped. But in other agencies concerned, uh, when, when other agencies are concerned with major public issues, from everything from uh, wild horse roundups to wilderness areas, we always get voluminous uh, amounts of information. And I think it would be helpful for people in this area who have had quite nasty experiences with fallouts during the above ground testing if they had more information about the underground tests. We came up with even more questions from testimony we found in transcripts of congressional hearings concerning nuclear testing. Colonel Raymond Brim, last August, after his retirement as head of the Air Force's Technical Applications Center, told a congressional subcommittee, quote, The American people have not received the true facts over the past 16 years of underground testing concerning nuclear fallout and radiation. He added, quote, There is undisputable evidence on record that shows that the people not just of Utah and Nevada, but a much wider and more encompassing area of the United States were unknowingly subjected to fallout of radioactive debris. Another statement of Brim's before the House subcommittee. Several underground tests had not been reported, and in some cases when tests were cited, the newspaper reports were misleading in that the degree of fallout was either underestimated or was reported as not existing at all. We wanted to get Colonel Brim to elaborate on those allegations. He lives in Salt Lake City, but declined to be interviewed. However, he did tell us by telephone, quote, I stand by my previous statements. Another congressional statement, this one by Captain William Gray, Assistant Director for Tests, from a copy of the transcript we received, which incidentally was stamped confidential. Quote, considering past experience, Massive venting can be expected in about one in blank events. Notice the actual estimate had been censored out. In conclusion, we see that once again concerning American nuclear testing, not all the facts are known. The credibility the government lost when it falsely assured us of the safety of above ground tests has not been regained. But the nuclear journalist also is not held in the highest esteem today. Playing off of this government mistrust has led to sensational headlines backed with incomplete research of the story. 
and that is irresponsible journalism. The government and the media must learn to give the public the facts without false assurances or at the other extreme, alarmist semantics. Never again should the government and news media let this occur. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this program to bring you important news. Word has just been received from the Atomic Energy Commission that due to a change in wind direction, the residue from this morning's atomic detonation is drifting in the direction of St. George. It is suggested that everyone remain indoors for one hour or until further notice. There is no danger, no danger. <laughs>